Hey guys, Zot here. With Phase 1 being well underway, and Phase 2 bringing the much awaited honor system, PvP is going to take the forefront for most people. And with the abundance of PvE pre-raid bis lists out there, there just isn't any information for PvP pre-raid bis gear. So welcome to exactly that. We cover stat priority, and then what pieces of gear you should be looking to obtain, along with where and how you get them. In today's episode we're going to be taking a look at Mage, but more specifically Frost Mage, as for PvP Frost brings the control and the damage you need in order to best your opponents. As always let's start off with stat priority, what is it Frost Mages are looking for on their gear, as often PvP stat priorities differ greatly for those stats you would normally aim for in PvE. First up is your hit cap. For PvP you want to aim for 3%, however this is currently unobtainable in pre-raid bis gear, without a huge sacrifice to stats, but further down the line you'll have an easier time finding hits on your gear. Hit rating is just as important in PvP as it is for PvE, without any hit you'll have a chance to miss your spells, against targets the same level as you. This happening in PvP could potentially lose you the fight. Despite not being able to obtain the 3% hit required, you can still reach 2% with pre-raid bis gear, and then make up the hit rating by sacrificing points into elemental precision and arcane focus, to make up that extra percentage. Bear in mind as a caster, you'll always have 1% chance to miss, regardless of your hit cap. Next is intellect and stamina, these are your best and most readily available stats. Intellect of course gives you mana, at a rate of 1 intellect equating to 15 mana, with 59.5 intellect giving you 1% critical chance. Without mana you obviously just can't cast your spells, a higher mana pool means you can last longer and come out with the win. Stamina however directly translates into higher health pool, with 1 stamina giving you 10 health, again similar to mana, a higher health pool will allow you to survive a lot longer. Having a small health pool in PvP will give you a very high chance of just simply being one shot, as Mage is amongst the squishiest classes in the game, you can often be taken down before you can even react, if your health pool isn't adequate. Now spell damage is next on the list, as it's the most important stat for increasing your damage. Different spells have different coefficients with spell damage, for instance fireball is increased by 100% of your bonus spell damage, whilst frostbolt is only 81.4%, however more spell damage is simply more damage, and a great stat when it comes to pvp. Last on our stat priority list is critical strike chance, now despite this being last on our priority list, it's still an extremely good stat in pvp, obviously it gives you a critical strike chance, however this is valued higher for mages due to certain talents, for instance when playing frost you spec into ice shards, which in turn increases the critical strike damage bonus of your frost spells by 100%, so makes critical strike very valuable. Let's take a look at the best in slot gear you can get right now for pvp, bear in mind this is pre-raid phase 1 gear, so includes all dungeons including the newly released dire mall, but to remain up to date with this list be sure to hit that subscribe button. Starting from the top and working our way down we've got your helmet slot, for this it's going to be the crimson felt hat, this hat has a perfect balance of stats containing both 8 intellect and also stamina, with also some added spirit, not to mention a giant plus 30 increase to your damage in spells and abilities. To get this awesome looking hat you'll need to head to Strapholm, the undead side to be more specific, dropping from one of the later bosses Magistrate Barthilas, however if you have a decently optimised group you're able to pull him instantly when you go into the side entrance, making farming this hat extremely trivial. Moving down, next up is going to be neck piece, for this it's going to be the star of Mystaria, providing again your two most wanted stats, stamina and intellect, accompanied once more by some spirit, however the main strength of this item is the 1% hit it provides, as mentioned in the stat priority hit is extremely important, and actually very hard to come by in pre-raid gear. This amazing neck comes from the final boss in Strathholm Livingside, which is of course going to be Balzanar. 
Shoulders are up next on the agenda. For these, you're going to be looking to obtain our first piece of the Necro Piles Rainment set, a set in which we're also going to be taking the leggings and the boots for. The pieces from this set are perfect when it comes to PvP, as each piece contains a very high amount of both stamina and also intellect. Completing this set also offers some nice bonuses, which is increased defense helping for when melee connect to you, and on top of that an extra 5 intellect for completing the free set. Coming from the depths of the dungeon Scholomance, this set has a chance to drop from any of the 6 mini bosses you're required to kill in order to summon the final boss, Dark Master Gandlin. Now for Cloak, the best option you can get for PvP is going to be the Deep Woodlands Cloak. This cloak provides a large amount of intellect as well as stamina and also some spell damage, so everything we're looking for. However, the drawback is it's only obtainable for the Horde. The Deep Woodlands Cloak is a reward from the Elite Quests in the Hinterlands and requires you to kill Vile Priestess Hex and her minions. Now these elites are in their mid 40s, so can be soloed at level 60 with ease if you didn't pick up this cloak whilst leveling. An alliance alternative is the equally as strong Spirit Caster's Cape. Stamina, intellect and spell damage once more, this time with just a little bit of spirit and less stamina. Spirit Caster's Cape however is from the High Interrogator inside of Blackrock Depths. You can easily do this boss at around level 50 and get your hands on this fantastic cloak. Next up is going to be Chest. Now this probably won't come as a surprise as this robe for phase 1 is just insane and beats out even raid gear. I'm of course talking about the robe of the Archmage. Despite the lack of stamina, this robe has a huge amount of intellect, spell damage and even some critical strike, not to mention the utility provided by the on use. Now to obtain your very own robe of the Archmage, you first got to get the pattern. You can do this either by purchasing it off the auction house for a small fee or running lower Blackrock Spire for a chance at a drop from the Fire Guard Pyromancers. After you've got the pattern, you're going to need to make sure you're at max tailoring level before either farming or buying the materials in order to create the robe from the auction house. But incredibly worth it, as this robe is just insane for both PvP and PvE. Now braces are going to be up next, and for these we're going to use our first item from the newly added Dire Maul instance. The Sublime Wrist Guards have 10 intellect, 6 stamina and 6 spirit, and also a nice plus 12 bonus to damage and healing, so contain everything we're looking for in an item. The Sublime Wrist Guards, as mentioned, are from Dire Maul, and drop from either Guard Moldor or Guard Slipkick inside of the Dire Maul North instance. Now gloves and bow are our only armor spots left, so let's start off with gloves. For this we recommend the Shivery Hand Wraps. Now these gloves offer high amounts of stamina and intellect with again a small amount of spirit, but this time offer 17 frost damage on top of that. Now why these gloves are good is that there are no other pre-raid gloves that have your highest priority stats, which are of course stamina and intellect, with just spell damage. So despite only affecting your frost spells, these are amazing gloves as for the most part in PvP, you'll be relying heavily on your frost damaging spells. Now these gloves are once again from Scholomance. You'll grow to love this dungeon as a lot of the pieces in this set are going to be from there. This time however, you'll be wanting to kill the Lich Raz Frost Whisper, who has around a 17% chance to drop these gloves. Now our last piece of armor is going to be the belt. For both PvE and PvP, there is one belt every single caster wants. And that's of course going to be the Banfox Sash. This belt is so incredibly strong as not only is it perfectly itemized with stamina, intellect and spell damage, but on top of that provides you with 1% hit. As mentioned, hit is incredibly hard to come by and any hit you can get without heavily sacrificing your gear is going to be insane. To obtain this belt, it's back to Blackrock Depths, this time the arena, as this sash drops from Ock 4 the Breaker, one of the six potential bosses inside the Ring of Law. If you're lucky enough to get this ogre boss, he has a 1 in 3 chance of dropping this belt. If he doesn't drop the belt however, luckily enough, one of his other items is the Cyclopean Band, which is thankfully our best in slot ring, providing again both high stamina and intellect with some other minor stats and a decent amount of spell damage, so perfect for player versus player. 
Our second best in slot ring is going to be the Blood of the Martyr. This ring is insane for survivability. 15 stamina on one ring is absurd, and on top of that it's even got a very high amount of intellect, so it's just insane when it comes to PvP. To get one for yourself, it's going to be off to Strathholm. First, you're going to need to clear the live inside, all the way up to the final boss. Just before the final boss room, you'll find a small room with Malor the Zelius inside. Kill him and in the corner you'll see a small chest. Loot this and inside will be the Medallion of Faith. After that, return to the undead side of Strathholm near the side entrance and you'll see a chapel. Inside, an NPC named Aureus will be there. Give the medallion to him and then you'll be required to kill the final boss of the undead side, which is Baron Riven Dare. Kill Baron and you'll be rewarded with this ring. Moving on to weapons, now let's first talk about main hand. One handers often take priority over staffs, and that's simply down to the power in certain offhands, but we'll touch on that in just a moment. For your weapon, you'll be aiming to get the Arbiter's Blade, providing you with 5 intellect, a huge 8 stamina, and also plus 8 to damage and healing, so again, our 3 highest priority stats. To get this one, it's going to be off to Blackrock Depths once more, this time it's from Warder Stilgris, who can be found inside of the Coffer Room. Now I mentioned I'd touch on offhands. There are two offhands that are incredibly powerful in most situations. That's the Skull of Impending Doom and the Furbolg Medicine Pouch. Skull of Doom is perfect for when facing mages, rogues or hunters, as you can potentially break crowd control, whereas the Furbolg Medicine Pouch is a must when being focused, as it's a 1k heal over time. To obtain the Skull of Doom, you'll have to partake on a quest chain starting in the Badlands from Falder in the Lost. However, for more information on this, be sure to check out our item spotlight, whereas the Furbolg Medicine Pouch can be obtained by reaching Honoured with the Timbermore Hold and then purchasing from Gorn One-Eye. Now, for when both of these offhands are on cooldown or you think you won't need them for the fight, the best weapon you can get is going to be the Rod of the Ogre Magi. 1% crit, high in, high stamina and even 23 spell damage. This staff should be your go-to default weapon for when you don't need either the skull or the pouch. The Rod of the Ogre Magi is from Diamol. When doing tribute runs, you'll have to complete Diamol North without killing any of the named NPCs. Then besides the king at the end of the instance, you'll get a chest named the Tribute Chest. This staff has a small chance of being inside. Wands are next on the list, with the only option being the perfectly itemised wand, Storm Rager. Now not only does this provide you with a gain high stamina and intellect, but what makes this wand even more powerful is its speed. Coming in at 1.3, this is one of the fastest wands in the game. In PvP, fast wands are what you're aiming for. Being able to push back casts is a very important aspect of vanilla PvP, and this wand is perfect for that. Storm Rager is from a quest started in Eastern Plaguelands, at Nathanos Blightcaller for Horde and Highlord Bolvar for Dragon for the Alliance. After a short chain, you'll be required to kill a Scarlet Elite named Demetria. Slay her, return back to your quest giver, and you'll be rewarded with Storm Rager. Last on the list is going to be Trinkets. Now, Trinkets in Classic are a little different. There are a huge amount of Trinkets you should have on you at all times and there really isn't any best in slot trinkets you should aim for. Instead, look to collect as many as possible, as many useful utility trinkets as you can get. So things like Tidal Charm, all of the engineering trinkets including Netomatic, Frost, Fire, Shadow Reflectors, Nifty Stopwatch, Carrot on a Stick, Barrel of Peasant Caller, Arena Grandmaster, the list goes on. These trinkets all have a very long cooldown and are all very situational. So make sure you get as many as you can and keep them in your inventory, ready to swap around as required. However, saying that, there is two trinkets that are good in every situation, and these are going to be the Lifestone and Eye of the Beast. Lifestone may not look great at first, but what this is, is it essentially acts as a healing potion that doesn't share a cooldown with any other healing items. So you can Health Stone, Health Pot, Whip a Root, and then still use this trinket whereas Eye of the Beast is just a static 2% crit, and you can't ever go wrong with Critical Strike, so it's going to be good in every situation. Alright then guys, that wraps up our pre-raid PvP best in slot for Phase 1 for Frost Mages. Now, we're going to be keeping these up to date with the phases, so make sure to check back once Phase 2 hits for an updated best in slot list, 
And as always, be sure to please like this video and subscribe to our channel for more up-to-date content.